Well, good day, champions, and welcome back to another episode. We're back down on Redhead Beach, and I've actually got a shark bait out on that one, trying out a new rig. So if it does any good, I'll show it off in a future video. But over here, we're just trying to catch some tailor and salmon to stock up on bait and using a rig I haven't shown on the channel before, which is a breakaway rig using a sinker release clip. So I'll show it off, what it's used for, as well as some alternatives in rigging, and hopefully we get a fish. Okay, so here is the rig. Now this might look complicated, but really it's not. Requires a bit of unique gear, um, but it works really well for distance casting. This is what it's all about. If you're trying to get your bait that little bit further, then this is the rig to go to. So what we have here is this is the main line, my wind on leader. Onto that, I've got a small T swivel, which I'm gonna give um, links in the description where I get all my gear. You can also make these, which I'll see if I can find a video and link that. So we've got a T swivel and off that is our sinker line. And so this is a Gemini splashdown breakaway sinker. So this is a type of grapnel sinker these legs clip in, dig into the sand. When a fish takes it or um, you wind in, these clip out of the way. But they're really good for holding the bottom much better than a um, pyramid sinker, star sinker. And what this device is here, this is the sinker release clip. If you just see, there's a little cutaway here where you're gonna put either a hook or a dingle dangle, which I'll show that off in a sec. And you're gonna pull that down and it's gonna secure it in that little hole there. When this hits the water, this gets pushed up and you'll see that bit of metal is angled. So it's gonna push out the hook or your dingle dangle and away it goes. So, T-swivel off to your grapnel swing sinker. It's got a bead to protect the knot. Uni knot to a swivel, uni knot. And here's our hook leader. And this just has to be shorter than your sinker line. It can be about the same length, but here I've gone about half the length of my sinker line. What I've got here, just because I'm using pillies, got me gang set up. And down here, this is the dingle dangle. So I've just made this using a bit of, I think it's a 90 pound single strand wire doing a haywire twist. There's another haywire twist under here. And just a little bit of hink, um, shrink wrap. And what that's gonna do, you're gonna put this over your bottom hook and it's gonna stop it falling off. If you um, don't have it, you'll have it like that. And when you're fighting a fish, bringing it in, you're just gonna lose those. So, bit of shrink wrap. So this all might seem a bit confusing, but I'll show you how it works. And hopefully you get it. So find a nice big pilly. And what we're gonna do first is snip the tail off. That's just gonna allow it to cast a bit better. So we'll have our dingle dangle behind the bait. So we'll go do the bait down here. Put it on just like a regular pilly. These gangs are a little bit long, but that's all right. So there we go, our pilly all baited up. We'll bring our dingle dangle down to the bottom here. And what we're gonna do is hook it in there, pull that down shut. Now that is secure in there, it's not going anywhere. Oh, that one did, because I pushed it up a bit. There you go, once it's down like that, she's in there. And if you see, I'll just do up my drag. So what you've basically done is connected your bait to your sinker. It's all in one line. It's not going to helicopter. 
and it's just going to cast that much further. Once this hits the water, pushes up, bang, your bait goes away and you're good to go. And we have this sliding on the main line so a fish is free to take the bait and do a bit of a run with it. Shouldn't feel any resistance. So there you go. That is the breakaway cast rig using a sinker release clip down here. I'll show off some other ones and some other sinker types, but that is the nuts and bolts of it. I'll just quickly go over the gear. So 30 pound braid. Here's my joiner knot down here. Got 50 pound wind on fluorocarbon using 50 pound for this, but using 20 pound for the sinker line. And that's where it gets its name from, breakaway, where you want this to be lighter than your, um, than your main line and your hook trace, so that if this becomes lodged in the sand or in rocks or anything like that, this is just gonna break. Hence the breakaway rig. So there you go. I'm gonna put this one out there and I'll show you some um, alternatives for sinkers, clips, dingle dangles, all that kind of stuff. So the reason I'm using this right now is because I want to get right at the back of the gutter there. And this is quite a floppy rod. Look, if I had a stiffer rod, it'd be no, no problem using the um, rig that I've shown off in a previous video, which I'll link in the description. But these rigs just allow you to belt it out. Hopefully you see it, but the sinker and bait, is gonna stay in a line and absolutely sail. So yeah, using pillies, but look, this type of rig, you can use on so many different baits for so many different types of species. And we're just gonna leave it at that today. I'll show off um, how I've been using them for dewies, hopefully soon. We'll see, we'll see. Anyways, I'll keep an eye on that one, but Let's go have a look at some of the other sinkers and clips that you can use. All right, let's have a look at what else you can use. So we'll look at sinkers first. And so this is the one we're using, Gemini Splashdown, and that just has the sinker release clip built into it. These ones I like using for kind of smaller surf conditions. In larger surf, you'll just find that these don't quite hold as good as some of these other ones. But you know, for conditions like this, they're absolutely perfect. And so, that's a splashdown. That comes in four, five, and six ounces. These Gemini ones I get off Marketplace off this dude called Lupco. I'll uh, leave a link in the description to where you can contact him. So what he's got is four, five, six ounces of these. And these ones without the uh, sinker release clip, these go down to about two ounces, up to about seven ounces, I believe. But same deal, they just don't have the holding power that these other ones have that I'll get onto in a sec. But those are the splashdown ones. You can also um, tighten up the uh, release point here by just pinching that with a bit of plier, with some pliers just if you find that they're releasing when you don't want them to. So there's those two. Here is a grapnel sinker. I think this is just the Jarvis Walker one. Places like BCF Anaconda, they're starting to stock these type. And this one doesn't look too bad. I haven't even used this one, but it doesn't look too bad. Again, the wire is pretty thin for these kind of surf conditions. It would do fine. It doesn't have a uh, sinker release clip either. Then you get onto these kind of better made grapnel sinkers and they just have a thicker wire in the legs here. And you're really surprised by um, how much these can hold in the bottom. Generally you want these to be really light. 
heaps lighter than you think. You want them just to be able to push out. And I guess it's because the way they're sitting in the sand, they're digging in like this. It requires a lot of force to get just one side to pop out. It's easy to pop out when you're pushing on both of them, but when it's sitting in like that, we've got two in there, it requires a fair bit of force. So I have these light as. And with this one, it's actually got this little hook on top here. And what you can do is you can hook that onto your dingle dangle and it should come out as soon as it hits the water. All my uses, they come out, so these are great. And that's what I'm actually using on that shark rig over there. Using a dingle dangle as well, which kind of shows how versatile this kind of setup is. And of course, you can use the good old star sinker as well. You'll just need to put a release clip on it. And release clips. So here is one of the Gemini ones. So this one you can add on to any one you want. You're just gonna put your dingle dangle or hook there, slide it down so it's enclosed there. As soon as it hits the water, pops it up, pushes it out and away you go. With these type, it's pretty handy to put on one of these little um, clips here underneath. And that just makes it easy to get the sinker on and off. Quickly check out my rod. Just makes it uh, easy to get the sinker on and off because it's quite a tight little gap in there and requires a fair bit of force. So put one of them on it, you're laughing. So those are the Gemini ones, again, through that um, Loop Co bloke on uh, Facebook. This one here is called an Imp Clip. Um, much the same, same way of releasing, but basically what you're gonna do is hook your hook or or um, dingle there and when this hits the water that's going to be forced up pushing that hook or dingle dangle out and you just um, put it on top of your sinker like this put down the hook so I don't hook myself and there you go that's how you'd use one of these on a um, sinker that doesn't have a release clip on it these work really well too. I do think these are a bit better design, but I really haven't had any drums with these ones as well. A very cheap alternative is just to use one of these clips. So tie that on at the bottom of your sinker line, and then it's gonna work much the same way that these do, where when your rig hits the water, Hopefully the force is going to push that down and away, and away you go. Lastly, here's just a um, different way to make a dingle dangle. So this is with a bit of 200 pound Dacron, which is pretty damn heavy. You could use a hundred pound. And so what I've just done there is tied a solid ring, done a three turn uni knot. You'd want to burn these down for lighter, just don't have one. And all I've done up here is an overhand knot or granny knot and you just burn that down as well. And with this type, what you're doing is actually going through the middle of the Dacron, just as such. But basically you're gonna to have to cut that off. It's not very reusable, but yeah, it would be great if, um, you know, you think something's gonna shy away from some metal, but you use a much smaller Dacron. So there you go, that is some different sinkers, different clips, I'll put links down in the description and all that. Pretty cool rig and you can kind of let your imagination go crazy with all the ways you can use this, the different bait presentations, all that kind of thing. One tip I would give is it's best to use a pretty stiff line on um, your hook trace. And just because if you have two kind of supple soft lines, you just, more prone to getting tangles and um, forming kinks when it wraps around and things like that. So stiff line for the hook trace is best. Right, let's uh, go see if we can get a fish. Oh, there we go, a bit of a look. And fish on. Nice. And look, that's a bit of a tip for you. What I've found over the years, if you've got a rod, 
is like a good sand bow. If you've got a rod in a rod holder, you're best off, and you get a bite, you're best off just to get to your rod and give it a crank. Because what I found through the action of picking up a rod, you sometimes give them a bit of slack, and that's all they need to get off. This feels like a pretty chunky salmon, taking a bit of drag, Jesus. Oh, and a jump. Bloody eight. Give us another jump. Go on, hey, look at that, beautiful. I think he's got me a bit of weed. Look at this, the Sambo's bricked me off the beach. You're joking. He has, he's got me in some weed. Yeah, look at that, beautiful. Oh. Good bloody fun, the old salmon. A big one. Yep. Yeah. Ah. There we go. Very nice salmon. Well, I think we got a fish on. Yeah, we got him. And it feels like a lovely little shark size one. Beautiful. You see him thrashing around on the surface out there. jump, do a jump. actually pretty decent he just didn't fight that hard yeah there we go another one bites the dust well i've already gotten a few off camera so this one's going to go back good fun Missed him. Got him. It's like another good salmon. Jesus. Bloody good fun, the salmon. It's a shame they don't taste any better. Oh, 
Do a jump. And yeah, it looks like there's still plenty around. Oh yeah. Get him up in this wave. See if he wants to stay up. Yeah, we got him. Jeez, good condition too. Very healthy fish. another thumper. There we go, another cracking salmon. But I've got plenty of baits, so he's gonna go back. Woo! And off he goes. All right, well, I am gonna pack it in. Haven't had a single touch on the shark rod. Shameful. Lucky the salmon were around for a bit of fun. Ended up with seven or eight in the end. So I've cut one up for shark baits. I'll keep one more for a couple more baits and kept a couple for a mate to put in his crab, his crab pots. Give us a muddy Strickland. So yeah, that's the uh, breakaway Kind of long cast surf rig using those sinker clips. Really good for when you just want to get that a little bit further. The fish might be holding at the back of the gutter there just where the sand drops off. So yeah, good little thing to have in your arsenal. And look, if you've uh, enjoyed it, if you've learned something new, give us a like and subscribe, it helps out. And also, if you want a bit more info or anything, just chuck a comment down below. I'll be sure to get to you. No worries, I'll catch you next time.